Hey everyone, uh, welcome to the podcast. Today I'm having a chat with LaDonia. She's a holistic practitioner specializing in health and well being. She's also a life coach, fitness instructor, yoga instructor. She's got a background in psychology and mental health and has worked uh, for many years within the caring industries. Uh, so, really, we had a great chat, super interesting, and I hope you enjoy it. Hey, it's Lewis. Welcome to the podcast. Enjoy our conversations anytime, anywhere. Cool. And we're live. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thanks. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Had a crazy experience a couple of days ago. I got mugged for the first time. Oh my gosh, oh no. that's awful. Oh no. What happened? So I was walking home about nine o'clock mm-hmm. and a couple of guys on the moped like drove past mm. and then turned around yeah. and then drove past me again mm. and they were like shouting something. So I thought yeah. they wanted to direct- answer- ask me for directions or something. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, like what do you want? Anyway, one of the, the big guy at the back mm. hopped off, mm. came over <coughs> and he was like, Give me a watch, give me a watch. Yeah. Which is probably quite flattering because obviously I thought it was a guy mm. wearing a nice watch. Mm. But I don't wear anything. Yeah. So I was like, sorry, mate, I don't have a watch. Yeah. So I was like, what have you got? What have you got? So I gave him my phone. Yeah. And then luckily he didn't get violent. And oh then my gosh, on. I'm really glad you're yeah. okay. Crazy. Quite scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I'm surprisingly calm though. Yeah. It's quite funny. Yeah. Just like. You just accepted it, but that's the best way to be, isn't it? Yeah. Just accept yeah. it, move on. It's not worth it. Yeah. Mm. And you can't get into the phone anyway. Yeah, it's yeah. Like what they're going to do with it? Two hundred fifty-six bit encrypted. Yeah. Can't log in. Yeah. So. So you got your new phone now. So I got a new phone. And you're all safe. All safe. Good. Good. Set up. Story to tell. Yes. So it's cool. <laughs> what have you been up to? Well, been really busy at the minute. Doing running lots of sessions. Doing lots of one to ones. Working a lot. Um, and relaxing a lot as well because I like to do a bit of both. Nice. So you're doing yoga? Teaching yoga yeah. classes, fitness classes, um, doing coaching workshops and uh, delivering training for young people and professionals. So a wow. bit of everything. Super busy. Yeah. And what are you doing for young people? So with my young people, I manage a health service which supports young people to have an awareness of sexual health, um, relationships. Um, yeah, that's relationships, sexual health. For young people, sort of 13 to 25, I mainly work with. Nice. Which is really, so, are they really within nice. schools? Or? So, within schools, youth clubs, um, hostels, basically anywhere where young people are, I can go. Nice. Mm. And do they, they, do they join a, like a group? So, usually what I do are kind of, we have some groups, but I mainly do standalone sessions. So, it will be like a specific session on STIs or a specific session on consent. And it will be either based on what the organisation, like the school or the youth club, are looking for, or if there's been any issues. For example, there might be a school who's had a lot of issues with inappropriate touch. So, they'll ask me to come in and deliver a session on consent, for example. So, it's really varied. Nice. Are, yeah. they, are they into it, the kids? Yeah, they are. And I think they like having someone who they don't know to yeah. come in and they can just kind of ask any questions without that awkward thing of, oh, I have to see them again the next day or, oh, they're my maths teacher or something like that. So yeah, yeah. I get, we get a good response. Nice. Mm. And are you doing it also on other stuff, like health? Yeah, well-being. so I deliver sessions on um, sort of um, anxiety and stress, so sort of mild to moderate mental health. And then, of course, physical health as well, because I do the fitness and the yoga. So it's really mainly the combination of the physical health and the mental health that I work with and the sexual health. With kids? Yeah, with kids and adults. Yeah. Both. And are you finding, because obviously a big like issue with health generally mm. in the country. Yeah, yeah. Are so you finding that kids are getting more healthy or they're doing it more in school mm. or not? Well, in terms of how things are changing, there are cha- there is change coming. At the moment, for example, sexual health is not mandatory in schools, only biology is. So um, young people will have the birds and the bees, but they won't have those conversations about relationships, about screening, about STIs necessarily. Really? Yeah, but it, which is so unfortunate. But in 2019, the legislation is changing that all schools um, will have to deliver relationships and sex education so um, it's being changed from SRE which is sex and relationships to RS 
relationships and sex because god forbid we talk about sex first <laughs> yeah, yeah. but um and that will be for primary schools and secondary schools so from as what age? from uh from reception onwards really yeah so like five years old Yep. So that will be talking about things like boundaries, appropriate touch, how to say no, public and private body parts, and then all the way up to, you know, sort of pornography and things like that in the older secondary school years. Awesome. Yeah. And this is going to be, and they'll mix, right, in mixed schools? So mixed boys schools, and girls will yeah. Be, they'll be taught to get the same together. Yep. So the way I do my sessions, best practice is generally to teach them together. But if there's an issue where, you know, it'd be safer to separate them, then I will. But generally, mixed sessions all the way through. Interesting. Mm. And on the relationship stuff, mm. is that also group sessions? Generally, group sessions. I do also run women's groups as well, separately, so that women have a space to okay, express right. as well. So what do you cover with the kids mm. on relationships? So it will be things like boundaries, maybe social media. Um, consent oh. is a real big one because there's a lot of blurry lines about what consent means in the context of a relationship yeah, or yeah. just, you know, friends with benefits or other sorts of things. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the law, sexting, which is a big thing now. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's everywhere. It's a common part of many young people and adults' relationships, but there are lots of laws around it and there's lots of things that young people need to know about. I mean, keeping themselves safe, avoiding risky behaviour. So those are kind of the main areas that we cover. Harvey Weinstein missed out on that yeah, massively. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then on the diet, and what about on the diet stuff? Yeah. Like, so are, they, are they like learning at school, like what's good to eat, what's mm, not? Yeah, so with the nutrition side of things, I uh, mainly work with adults. Okay, so yeah, I'm not yeah. really in schools doing the nutrition and diet, but there are, there are little bits that are coming in terms of like um, what food is provided in schools vending machines are getting a little bit more healthy but i think we've still got quite a lot of work to do in that arena to be honest yeah yeah but it probably also comes from the parents because yeah when we were growing up like i think there was a lot less on diet mm. you know we're eating like lots of sugar mm. carbs mm. all this kind of stuff mm. um so it's been changing yeah there is a lot of awareness about diet now especially with new movements like veganism and things like that but then at the same time it's not always necessarily focused on health so some of it is focused on you know ethical reasons but veganism is more ethics than that's health, right? the thing because then there can be lots of very that's unhealthy true. vegan food that's true yeah and you're and you're vegetarian i'm vegetarian yeah vegetarian Fine. but non-dairy so a colleague of mine calls it vegan <laughs> <laughs> and was that um like health reasons or moral mm. so i've been vegetarian since i was a child and rather i would say it was more like spiritual reasons like i don't i love animals and i want to practice non-violence really so it was more a spiritual path for me okay and yeah. but, you, but you have fish though yeah, I have, well, I recently, unfortunately, was a bit poorly, so I had started adding in fish every now and then, yeah, and I've been, I stopped everything when I was seven. Stopped everything? As, as in, in meat and fish, interesting. and then recently I've, I've added back some fish. And do you find you're like still like energy levels are high? Yeah, I do, so I did try a period of going full vegan for about four months. But unfortunately, it really didn't work for my body. My energy levels were low. Right. My iron levels went down. So when I introduced the eggs again yeah. and occasional fish, if my body craves it, I won't deny it. Fine. But yeah. what's wrong with eggs, though? Um, well, if you watch a lot of the documentaries, unfortunately, sometimes or most of the time, the chickens aren't kept in very nice conditions. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I do feel bad, but also I want to try and balance in terms of looking after my health as well. So, yeah. but if you th but if you if you knew that the, the stuff you were consuming, mm. like the eggs, chickens, whatever, are kept in really nice conditions, yeah, that's cool. I'd feel a lot better. So if I had yeah. a pet chicken, yeah, that gave me eggs, I'd feel very comfortable with that. Fine. Yeah. But you wouldn't eat the chicken. No, I still wouldn't eat the chicken. <laughs> I think I'm going to go the opposite. I think I, need, I want to eat more meat this year. Do you? What's the reason? We're omnivores, like mm. humans. So mm. we, like we've we've grown up as hunter gatherers, right? Yeah. So I think you know vegetables, and we've been hunters, mm. and meats, in my opinion, super healthy. Mm. Like the richest bit is the liver, mm. and um, I feel great eating mm. meat. Mm. Like it's. Loads of protein, mm. um, the right, depending on what meat you eat, good fat. Yeah. Um, and then along with uh, 
along with vegetables and stuff. I think it's, it's perfect. I feel really good on it. Yeah, and so everybody's I've, different. Yeah. Mm. So I've like cut down a lot of my carbs. Yeah. So I've gone like I've tried to go kind of ketogenic okay. diet. Yeah. So like high fat, relatively high protein, mm. and then just cut my carbs. And I've tried to just go for it. anything with like the nutritional value in the back. Sack it off. Mm. So I've gone for like stuff that's grows in the ground. Yeah, natural. whole foods, very yeah. clean. I just feel like it's how we were. How we're meant to be eating, yeah. how our ancestors would have eaten. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I hear that. Yeah. And then the uh, the moral side, yeah, I mean, I try, well, I eat kosher. Mm. And so I think the, anim- the animals are, c- are kept well and mm. so forth. They're not fed with all of like, the um, steroids and stuff. Mm. So I feel good in it. And the morals are about the morals of the person because there can be some vegans that, even though they're vegan, not very nice people, and some meat eaters that are absolutely wonderful, and that is the case. So but sometimes I find the vegan stuff, they go, they, they really like evangelize. Yeah, sometimes it's a bit meat shamey. It's yeah, yeah. <laughs> so rather than it being for health reasons, it's yeah. like moral higher ground type yeah. stuff. Yeah. You rarely see meat eaters doing it the other way around mm. and there's so, no reason any of us should be having a moral high ground over anyone absolutely yeah you do what's right for you exactly it doesn't matter what other people do yeah um i just think genuinely like good advice on like health yeah is needed mm. because obesity diabetes is the biggest drain on the nhs mm. and definitely people need help mm. and i think what happens is I mean, I guess there is a lack of information that is definitely a factor, but also there's a lack of like um, belief that we are in control of our health. It's always like that kind of white coat syndrome. The doctor will tell me what to do. The doctor will heal me. And it's like the healing ability is within ourselves. Yeah. yeah. So I strongly believe that. True. Yeah. What about the, do you do much exercise? I do. I do uh, weight training. I teach dance and I do yoga every day. Nice. I love my yoga. You yoga every day? Every day, yeah. When did you get into it? I got into yoga, I would say, about five or six years ago by accident. I kind of stumbled across a class, thought it would be like this easy peasy breathing thing <laughs> and got in, sweated, like more than I could possibly imagine, moved in ways that I never knew possible and I just absolutely loved it awesome. and then just went from there. So which one did you start with? So I started with fitness yoga. So I was in a gym. It was just fitness yoga. It was purely for fitness purposes. Wanted to get flexible. Wanted to try something new. And that was really my only sort of idea about it at that point. And at the time, are there mostly women in the class? Yeah, it is mostly women, actually. Still now. Yeah. Really? Yeah. What percentage do you find? I mean, the classes I teach are women only anyway. Right, right. Um, And when I attend classes, it tends to be, I would say, 95% women. Interesting. Yeah. Why do you think that is? I think think the way that yoga is portrayed in the mainstream media is an image of a young, usually white female. So that's who people identify with and so we just get the repeat of those same people coming yeah, it feels yeah. like a bit of an exclusive space yeah which i don't really like unfortunately but then you do see like the yogis in india are like yeah men. they're men yeah. yeah i know and you can tell that because a lot of the postures are actually suited to a male body oh, are they? things like feet together um in a standing position which for a woman with hips is very hard to do true but for a man is quite easy and there's a posture called shoulder stand, which if you've got boobs is really hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was kind of developed by men for men at that time. Interesting. Yeah. So wait, so, but in India, mm. I, I, I presumably uh, uh, more men do it there than men here, right? Yeah. Because that typical like white female, mm. uh, is, that, is, that, is that a Western thing? That's a Western thing, yeah. That's how it's kind of developed in the North America and Europe. So it's it's really quite different from the traditional yoga um, and the ancient spiritual practices. What's what's done in the UK and Canada and the States is like, I would say maybe like 10% of what of the real spiritual practices. I mean, what's the less postures and... Well, the, the full yoga is more like a philosophy. So I would say it's something akin to Buddhism. Right, yeah. It's a whole philosophy with scriptures and practices. And there are eight limbs of yoga and the physical postures are only one of the eight limbs. So there's other factors that someone would follow if they wanted to follow a yogic lifestyle. And that 
traditionally in India is what is known as yoga. Okay. Uh, the postures were just to make you strong, supple, and give you a good way to sit for meditation, oh. traditionally. And do you do meditation as well? I do, I do. I get so, like, fidgety. Do you? I tried it, like, once or twice. What did you do? I got pins and needles. Oh, did you? Couldn't sit still. Yeah, it's <laughs> it hard. We've got busy minds. Yeah, I'm literally, yeah. I was, like, so busy, because they were, like, clear your mind. Yeah. And I was, like, um... <laughs> And like just so many things were going on in my mind. Yeah. And I was sitting cross legged and like I just got, yeah. Yeah. Do it. it happens. Yeah. But yoga though, mm. I've also been doing for probably on and off for a bit longer. Yeah. Um, I started with, um, I think I, I started with like Bikram. Mm. Hot yoga. Hot yoga. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great. challenge. <laughs> it was great. Yeah. Because I was doing, I was like doing a lot of running. Yeah. And then I just needed to really like have a good stretch. Yeah. And I was quite flexible before, um, but I just really wanted a good like hour and a half. And so I got in the hot yoga, mm -hmm. and it was like I sweated like a bitch. Yeah. For an hour and a half. Yeah. Great stretch, felt great. And then so I got into like a little on and off doing that. Mm. And then I tried tried a few other yoga. Yeah. And I did like um, what's the other one? I can't remember what the other ones were now. Maybe uh, vinyasa. Yeah, flow. vinyasa. Flow. Yeah. Yeah. But then when I started hot yoga, mm. I was probably, yeah, like one of a few guys. Mm. But then I found that more and more guys are doing it. Yeah, hot yoga is quite uh, one of the most popular ones for men to try. Oh, okay. How did it make you feel being the only guy in the room? Or one of the Do few? you know, um, it was fine. Yeah. I didn't care. Yeah. yeah. Like I was just sweating. Yeah. And <laughs> I was just like, you just... You, it's hard enough just to try and do the poses. Yeah, exactly. You know, like I don't mind who was watching me. Yeah. Um, you know, like you just everyone's in there sweating. Yeah. It's really hard. Mm. I quite I like putting myself in uncomfortable situations, mm. and uh, it's a really uncomfortable situation. Yeah, it definitely is. And so when I afterwards, I felt so good, mm. like just sweating. that release. Yeah, just some really amazing. Mm. And I think more. I think it's getting more popular with guys. Yeah, definitely. Although if I think about my mates, not many. No. Not many are doing yoga. But it is really? changing in general, so I'm, I'm hoping. Well, so many new um, places are popping up. Exactly, studios everywhere, which Literally is positive, everywhere. and classes yeah. online and things yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. yeah. But I see that more. What's, uh, what strength do you do, like strength and conditioning? So I'm very much in the weight training. I like free weights. Um, that's my favourite type of strength and conditioning workout to do, and a bit of body weight as well. Yeah, so like mixed. Pull up, so calisthenics and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, I love it. It just make it's a really nice um it's a really nice addition to the yoga. I love the strength and the flexibility together. Um I think it makes a really nice balance because I found when I before I started yoga, I used to do all straight tra strength training, you know, very tight, very stiff, naturally flexible, but just didn't have the same mobility as I have now. So, I love them both together. So you've, and you got the mobility from the yoga. I think I got the mobility from specifically training mobility, actually, because um, I had the flexibility and the strength. And then with the yoga, with the mobility training, I like to just move in lots of different ways, whereas yoga is a bit back and forwards on the mat only. So I like to sometimes take it off the mat and just move around in space now. So which is what? Like, how do you, <coughs> what do you do for mobility? Mm -hmm. So I just do my own workouts, really. I just... Um, so say, for example, you come into a lunge position and that would be quite a static movement. So I've got the strength to hold myself in a lunge and the flexibility to open my hips and my quads to get there. Mobility might be moving back and forward in the lunge or side to side oh, okay. to work deeper into the stretch. Um, so it's like the flexibility and the strength together, which is what I'm sort of working on this year. Nice. And yeah. then the dancing ties everything together. Yeah, dancing is just where I started. I just love it. I love teaching my girls and yeah, just love to dance, love to move. And what, dan what dance do you do? So I mainly teach Latin and Caribbean and um, nice. sort of R&B nice. as well. So like world styles, anything nice. with a good beat, reggaeton, dance hall. Love reggae it. yeah yeah and then you do what an hour session do an hour session and you do what, teach them a uh... yeah so i teach them either zumba or just choreography nice yeah nice so did you do dance when you were younger yeah so i was always kind of in between so when i was at school i did my traditional gcse's and my humanities subjects but on the side i also studied dance b-tech and then when I get to, got to college, it was the same thing. It was like half of my A-levels were creative, half of my A-levels were more humanities, social science. Cool. And then when I got to university, I had to make the choice. So I chose to go down the route of psychology, 
but I couldn't leave my passion for movement. So then I started a train to become an instructor on the side um, and then kind of just always been doing them simultaneously ever since. Nice. And then how did the mental health stuff? So that came when I finished my degree. I then went and did a postgrad in life coaching and started working as a high school counsellor with sort of mm. mild to moderate mental health with high school students. And so did that, um, but then still taught my classes in the evening. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Nice. What's your favourite bit? Oh, I think my favourite bit is seeing people progress from A to B. So the classes that I teach, for example, they're all in community locations apart from one. I teach in libraries, I teach in community centres, and they're, you know, they're my sessions. So I get women who feel that generally they wouldn't be able to exercise. They're not you know, they're not the gym goers. They're yeah. women who want to try something new, who maybe come for social reasons. And then when they get there and they work with me and we build on their strength and their cardio, they become new women. They nice. become people that they thought they could never be. And that's what I really love about it. How do you get more people involved in it? Oh, do you know what? To be honest, in all my years, I've never marketed. I mean, like, <laughs> I've never marketed. But we need to get more people genuinely yeah. into like moving, moving. health. It's amazing. I know. I think, yeah. I think we need to make it less exclusive. So my classes are quite cheap. Where I can, I get funding. So that making it that people aren't priced out of the market. It doesn't seem like something ridiculous. I mean, the t the typical yoga class in London is seventeen pounds. So, I mean, it's I think expensive. it's expensive and it's exclusive. So I think we need to kind of demystify it and just make it seem like something normal. Um, and then, like, a round of drinks in London? Yeah. Is like, you can spend 100 quid. Yeah. But so, a lot of people say it's too expensive. Mm. And, and for, like, a bunch of people, for sure. Mm. Like, 17 quid for an hour. Yeah. But then there's loads of people I speak to and they say, oh, it's too expensive. But then, then they drop 100 quid. On that's true. That's a good point. It's a, it's a mentality shift, I guess, isn't it? Hugely. Because at mm. some point you have to invest in your health. Yeah. You have to invest now in yourself. Or, yeah, massively. Mm, mm. I think a lot of people are just lazy and yeah. they can't be bothered. Yeah. And the hardest thing is getting off the couch. It is. And it's the mental fatigue. They say at the end of the day, I'm tired after work. I don't have the energy to go and, and move. But if you move, you will have more energy. It's the mental fatigue. It's not physical. If you've been sitting at your desk all day, you're not physically fatigued. So I think there's sort of a knowledge bit there as well. Hugely. Mm. But also, like, the mental health and the exercise is hugely linked. Such a big link. Yeah. For mm. me, I feel, so, I feel so good after doing exercise. Mm. I do CrossFit. Yes. I told you, I spoke, yeah, spoke yeah, about yeah. it last time. How's that going? Uh, yeah, I love it. Yeah. I love it. There's like a big, you know, a lot of people like don't like it, a mm. lot of people like it. Mm. I mean, for me, just movement in general mm. is amazing. Yeah. You know, it's just better to be doing something than not. Exactly. Um, for me, I really love CrossFit because it's a group exercise mm. and I work much harder with other people. Mm. And then it's coached and then I'm learning new skills. Yeah. Because like being fit is great, but being fit and learning new skills is exactly. even better. Icing on the cake. Yeah. Mm. So I'm doing like gymnastics. Um, Olympic weightlifting, yeah, which I'd never really done before. I used to just run. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's been really good. Mm. I've done it for like uh, coming up to three years now. Nice, yeah. Which has been really cool. Yeah, I've not tried CrossFit yet, but it is on the list. Get involved. Yeah. Get involved. It's yeah. Been really great. Awesome. I think we've done uh, probably like half an hour or so now. Cool. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's okay. Um, yeah. Anything else you want to chat about? No, I'm done. Yeah. Thank you. See ya. Well, it's been so good to chat with you. Thank you so much for having me today. Really enjoyed it. Pleasure. It'd be great to have you. Yeah. Um, and um, so you can check all your stuff out and move with Donya. Yep. Instagram. Yep. Website. Facebook. Facebook. Yeah. All the usual social media outlets. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. Thanks again. Thanks so much, Lewis. See you soon. Take care. Bye bye. Hey, folks. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe in all the usual places.